AI versus human intelligence. AI versus children that can't read textbooks is the name of this book. It's a sensational title, but also a best-selling book selling over 300,000 copies in Japan, and there's a reason why. The author is a mathematician and a leading expert in AI. The book was so interesting and blew my mind. What the author was saying from the bottom of her heart was this. The AI boom is full of misunderstandings. She's saying that most of us don't know what we're talking about AI. Warning us to understand AI correctly and to be afraid of what will happen properly. These days people talk about singularity in AI. What is singularity? It's an idea that in the future humans will no longer be able to control the evolution of AI technology. That AI will become more intelligent than the human. Will that day really come? A world that AI keeps on creating intelligent generations of itself and surpasses human intelligence. That AI will be able to start controlling humans and humans will be following AI as a new god. What the author clearly says is that this singularity will definitely not come. AI will never surpass human beings. But she also says that this fact leads to a serious problem. That people not understanding the reason why singularity will not come true is a problem. And we'll know later why the title of this book is called AI vs. Children that Can't Read Textbooks, which is quite shocking. Okay, if singularity will never come true, you might think, that's great news for human, thank god, I knew humans were the best. No, this book doesn't end like that. Singularity, what most people are afraid of, won't come true. But a greater fear, what humans don't understand, will come. The leading expert in AI is warning us that the true fear will reveal after we understand why singularity won't come true. Humans will be driven into the corner by AI. Singularity won't come. AI won't become God. But humans will have their back against the wall by AI. Why? Let me explain. The definition of AI is wrong is what the author is saying. The true meaning of AI is that machines can think, feel, and act like human beings. That kind of real artificial intelligence is called AI. But what we're talking about AI like AI is so handy and wonderful is not AI. In the world we're living in, AI doesn't exist yet. There is no AI that can think, decide, and act like a human being. What we see today is a part of AI technology in separate fields. That if one day if all those AI technologies gather up, a true AI just like a human being can be made. For example, image processing, voice processing, natural language processing, voice activated helpers like Siri and Alexa. If you ask Siri to put on the kind of music you like, it will do so. A lot of things are going on in the AI technology. It looks as if they can literally see, hear, and talk. If you ask Siri, will you marry me, it will say, let's just be friends. But all of this is just an individual AI technology and it's not real AI that can think, act, talk like human beings. The AI is not thinking like the human being and coming up with all those answers. AI has a physical limitation on what it can do. Around 2010, machine learning started. In the world of big data and internet, the machines were able to install huge data and start deep learning. The things that AI can accomplish increased. Like the AI technology of YOLO, you look only once, was surprising. It's a real-time object detection and is the leading technology in the image processing. Which is the bicycle? The AI can identify the correct answer. This is quite impressive. There are so many types of bicycles out there, but due to big data, the machines were able to install all the information of bicycles. And that enabled AI technology to develop image processing. The author was involved in a project team to experiment whether AI can pass the exam of Tokyo University. This was featured in the news and people were so surprised that AI has come so far that it might have a chance to get in the hardest university in Japan. But the author clearly says that AI will never be able to pass that exam. Never ever. The purpose of the project was to identify what the AI can and cannot do. They made the AI learn multiple areas of information, but the aim was to find out the fundamental limit of what it can do. They knew right from the start that it can't pass the exam, but their interest was to find out the reason why. But during this project, they found out that AI can pass some of the exams that are ranked lower than Tokyo University. But this depends on the type of the exams. 
The AI is better at answering the fill in the blank type of questions. Tokyo University exam is a description or essay type and is advanced. Questions like describe the development and decline of the international trade in the 17th century of Southeast Asia and East Asia by explaining each nation's trade strategy. Holy smoke. What the project team learned is AI can get good scores in world history and mathematics. AI is always searching for answers and it was possible to develop the skills of searching better. To break down the questions that are asked so that it can be searchable to find the answer. But there were subjects that AI was not good at all. What do you think that is? It was English and Japanese the national language. But you might think Google translation is getting better these days. You know, the way AI works is installing huge data of sentences and just searching for the best fit to answer. AI isn't thinking like the human brain by reading the past sentences. It's just searching from the database and pulling out the right answers by statistics. Applying statistics to find the right answer. For example, if there was a sentence on a summer afternoon, and if a few sentences later the word cold comes out. We humans can understand that it's not talking about the temperature being cold, but catching a cold. AI can't tell the difference. Japanese is more difficult. Even by using the same words in a sentence and by changing the order, the meaning of the sentence can change. AI will start searching for the answer by not understanding the question in the first place. AI is just searching word after word and gathering the translation from the database and rearranging it. The project team found out that it can't improve the score in English and Japanese anymore. It seems that it's outside of the current technology. It's not what AI is good at. All of the things that AI is not good at is inside English, Japanese, or any national language. So what is that? What is the one thing that AI is not able to do? It's the meaning. AI doesn't understand the meaning. For example, when you search on Google or Siri, Italian restaurants nearby, you get search results. And when you search again, restaurants nearby that aren't Italian. You get the same kind of results of Italian restaurants nearby. You never find the search results that aren't Italian restaurants. The reason is because Google searches the keyword of Italian restaurants nearby. And looking at the statistics of what people have searched in the past, they came up with the result of Italian restaurants nearby. That's it. Google or Siri doesn't understand the meaning of restaurants that aren't Italian. This is the weak point of AI. AI isn't thinking like the humans. AI is just a calculating machine. But if you ask Siri, will you marry me? It will say, let's just be friends. This is not because Siri is thinking. It's because many people ask this question and the programmer of Siri made this special pattern with a sense of humor. What AI is doing is simply receiving the audio, searching, outputting by synthesized voice. The main function of AI is to calculate, but what about Google Translation? Of course it's getting better and better, but it has a weak point that can't be improved. Do you believe in Google Translation 100%? It really depends on the sentence. For well-known sentences used when traveling or sightseeing, the translation can be done perfectly. But once things get complicated, it can't follow the correct meaning. I went to Dallas with Austin. I went to Dallas and Austin. Google translation can't tell the difference. It can't understand the meaning because it's a calculating machine. But you might think, isn't it improving? What about supercomputer or quantum computing? If the speed of calculating drastically improves and deep learning expedites, wouldn't AI become greater? The author says clearly no to this. That's not how the calculation is done in AI. The author who is a mathematician says that mathematics is great indeed, but it has its limitations. Supercomputer or quantum computing isn't useful to overcome the weak point of AI. What AI can't find today can't find out with any other computer. It's fundamentally not possible. What is mathematics? It can only do three things, the author says. Logic, probability, and statistics. Logic. Logic in mathematics is if A equals B, B equals C, 
then A equals C. Stacy is a girl, a girl is a human, therefore Stacy is a human. This is logic and how computers and AI work. But there are things that can't be explained by logic. When you roll a dice, you don't know what number will come out. You can't get the same results by logic. And that's why probability came in to describe the randomness. The chance to get the number of 1 is 1 sixth. By probability, mathematicians were able to cover and explain the things that can't be explained by logic. But there were also things that can't be explained by probability and that's how they came up with statistics. Statistics is gathering the data of rolling the dice a million times and analyzing a pattern that underlines the events. We never know what kind of actions a person might take next, but by analyzing and piling up data of what the person took in the past, by statistics we can predict what might happen next. And taking statistics data is a mathematic approach. Logic, probability, and statistics expresses what mathematics can do. And there is limitation of what mathematics can do. Mathematics can never make AI learn what is outside of logic, probability, and statistics. It needs to be translated into one of them. Michael loves Vanessa. AI can't understand this. YOLO, you look only once, captures an image. It precedes the data by mathematical logic. An apple is on the table, the flower is next to the window. A is above B, C is next to B. This can be explained by mathematics. But the sentence Michael loves Vanessa can't be broken down to mathematics. It can't understand the meaning of it. What does love mean? What kind of percentage does it need to reach love? AI can't understand this at all. That's why singularity will definitely not come. Our human brain is mysterious and most of the parts are still unknown. It's difficult to dissect what is really happening in our blood or in our brain waves. There are too many taboos and the goal of modern medical is not clear. To describe what is unclear with mathematics is currently impossible. At least when you and I are alive, that day won't come. Singularity, that AI will surpass human. This will not be the case, so don't worry. AI isn't a dream or the things we see in a movie, it's just a technology. So you might say, thank you, I'm relieved. I've been hearing so much of these horror stories that AI will steal our jobs. Now everything looks fine. But here the author says, unfortunately not. What? Didn't you say that AI will never become God and suppress humans? What does this mean? What we need to worry about is the following. But before that, we need to recall what AI was good at doing. It's to gather the data and find the results logically. No humans could have access to their past memories that fast. Calculations. No human can calculate accurately like computers. Statistics. No human can store such huge data and analyze. Logic, probability, and statistics. These three are AI's strengths. It's obvious that there will be jobs that will be taken over by AI. But a few people might say that always happened in the history. When machines were invented, people lost their jobs in the factory. And that's how humans overcame difficulties. But the author of this book says that's too optimistic. That's not kind of the magnitude of what's going to happen. In the past, it was described with blue-collar workers who do manual labor and white-collar workers, mainly desk workers. That blue-collar workers will lose their jobs, machines and white-collar workers will grow. The AI world looks similar to this, but what we underestimate is that AI can cover a whole lot of things. For example, financial traders in the stock market are switching to AI, even bankers who decide which company to invest in. The AI can analyze the financial status and come up with a logical decision. AI can't pass the exam of English or Japanese, but it's excellent in these calculations. Many banks are already increasing the use of AI. The jobs that will be lost will be many. And the speed moving towards that direction is faster than we could imagine. Singularity will not happen, but we will lose jobs. But that's so terrifying, what can we do about this? People just need to switch their jobs to what AI cannot do. Yes, this is true, but how? And the author throws a strong question to us. Can you really do what AI cannot do? We just need to do what humans can do, right?
But the question is, can we really do it? You see, this book is quite dramatic. Singularity won't take place. AI is only a calculated machine and can't suppress humans, thank God. But after that, can you really do what the AI can't do? The keywords for jobs that can survive are communication skills and reading comprehension. The weak point of AI was that it can't understand the meaning. Whatever is outside of the logic, probability, and statistics, AI can't handle. When the author asked the very famous mathematicians, what's the most important subject in school? He said it's national language. It's because to understand math, you first need to understand what the question is saying. AI hit a roadblock understanding the meaning. AI just searches keywords and pulls out the right combination of info from statistics. It processes many things, but it can't overcome and understand the meaning. If we humans can understand the meaning, we can read books, we can understand what other people are saying and have success in any business. But the interesting part of this book is that the author says she doesn't know how to improve comprehensive skills. They've done a research on people who have high comprehensive skills. They've checked if they had habits reading books in their childhood, but there wasn't any relation here. They've also checked if they had habits of studying every day, but here they had no relation either. They've checked if the people had background of liberal arts or science, that maybe liberal arts might have a better comprehensive skill. There was no relation here. They took all the data, but there was no connection. They were just people who have comprehensive skill and who don't and that the people who have a high comprehensive skill will survive in the world of AI is what we know as a fact. Please somehow manage to survive. But the author says she doesn't know the answer because she's a mathematician. There are studies that comprehensive skills improve after being adults, but there isn't a scientific reason on how to gain that skill. The author is very honest and she won't say anything what she doesn't have absolute certainty of. What she can say is that singularity will never come. AI is just a calculating machine and it is not what we dream of in the movies. We will lose many jobs from AI. What human needs to survive is communication skill and comprehensive skill. And we don't know how to gain these skills yet. Please somehow manage to survive. This is where humans are right now. What we can do is to be prepared for the world ahead, to not be blindly optimistic, to try to find a way to how to deal with it. This has repeated on and on in human history. The future is always uncertain, but always keep in mind that understanding words correctly and communicating it properly will be the most important thing. Who knows, maybe one day we can understand how to develop these skills and have them both. And that will be the weapon for you to survive. So if you want to increase your comprehensive skill, try if you can understand the video over here. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Joey and this channel is all about self-development tips to change your mindset and change your life. So if this sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.